Boulder Dash is just a level in a video game. It can't hurt you. It's not real. You're just being chased by a boulder. How bad can that be? All you gotta do is Indiana Jones that shit. It's just one level in a video game. It can't hurt you. It isn't real. None of this is real. Welcome everybody to Crash Bandicoot. Figured it'd be apropos to stick with the PS1 era of games for a spell. After all, I didn't grow up on any of this shit. I wasn't exposed much to your Spyros or your Crash Bandicoots of the world or anything PlayStation as a kid, so I can't feasibly come out and call myself a fan with a straight face at this particular point in time. But what I can say is this. If there's one series out there, one that is shaped entirely around platforming, that I have a ton of respect for, it's Crash. Because Crash is one of the few games out there I've seen that truly seems to respect the hustle behind gaming. And what do I mean by that? I simply mean that Crash cares about not just making a fun game you and your friends can kill a couple of hours with, but making a game that is actually challenging to finish. No, I don't mean it's actually challenging to finish. I mean it's actually challenging to finish. Because Crash Bandicoot is not an easy game to play. Its levels can be long, frustrating, and sometimes cheap. And it may or may not require a lot of trial and error to make it to the end of this bad boy. But have no fear, because while the game is hard, it doesn't detract from the fun you have while playing it. So to tell you the truth, I'm super stoked about this one, and I'm itching to get right into it. Hey Crash, what say you smash one of them boxes and grab us a couple of wampa fruit for the road, buddy? Well that was wasteful. Right off the bat, I just gotta say this about Crash. It is the quintessential platformer. You know those games where you maneuver between platforms using a jumping motion? Yeah, this is basically the dictionary definition of that. Some of my best experiences with games over the years have been with the most straightforward ones. And Crash fits that bill way too well in terms of platforming. Because that is exactly what you're doing here. From beginning to middle to end. You are moving through these singular pathway levels of varying themes and tones and you're jumping from platform to platform. Sometimes those platforms are sedentary. Sometimes they shift in and out of walls. Sometimes they collapse the moment you land on them. It's the most classic experience possible that you can get out of a 3D platformer. And the best part is, there are almost no gimmick levels here that try to make you do something completely different in an attempt to change up the formula. It's straight to the point, no BS, so you can pretty much just kick up your feet and relax because there are no surprises to be had here. I feel like Crash Bandicoot really understands that sometimes you just gotta give the people exactly what they're expecting, and you gotta give it to them hard. Let me take you back to a game that is just as, if not more iconic, Sonic Adventure. If you dilute your game's core gameplay with too many differing game modes, characters, weapons, combos, campaigns, minigames, what have you, then you run the risk of losing the thread of the entire game's character. Plus, you end up divvying up your fanbase into those who like one part of the game but hate the other parts, or vice versa. Crash, on the other hand, doesn't overcomplicate things. He knows you just want to jump on shit and be cool doing it. And this ends up making for a very well-rounded and overall satisfying experience. Way to go, Crash! Your lack of intelligence actually lended itself to you having an awesome game. It's almost like he's not actually that dumb at all, but in actuality, a genius? Nah, that can't be right. Shoutouts to this game for also having one of the most satisfying difficulty curves in gaming. The art of perfecting the difficulty curve, I feel, is something that we still haven't figured out in nearly 50 years of gaming being a thing. Which is sad. And to that I say, come on humans, step it up. But boy, does Crash come close to getting it right because from level 1 all the way up to the battle with Dr. Neo Cortex, you almost don't even notice that each singular level just gets a little bit harder than the last. And this is exactly how it should be, because when you raise the difficulty gradually, the player actually has enough wiggle room to get better at the game at a reasonable pace, rather than if you have them play level 1 and then just drop them down into a rat's nest in level 2, they will probably fail over and over until they just get angry and rage quit. The first set of levels are based in the jungle, where it's pretty straightforward jumping, bouncing, dodging, with no surprises or anything like that. 
Set 2 takes place in an ancient temple setting, where we start to see more stuff like platforms that move in and out of walls, or up and down. We see enemies blocking the way in some pretty tight spots, and also levels that are just generally getting longer. Set 3 takes place at Cortex's lab, where things start getting real. You've got traps that pop up, enemies are throwing barrels at you, the lights go off if you can't turn them back on in time, certain enemies will block your path until you can defeat them. Crash in general takes you on a ride that just gets a little bit bumpier as you go along, and that's good. <laughs> However, along that road that gets gradually bumpier, there are a few potholes. The potholes being that handful of levels plopped into random parts of the game that make things very difficult for you. These include, but are not limited to, Road to Nowhere, Sunset Vista, and... <gasps> oh god, the level of which I do not speak. Basically, there are a couple of misfit levels that insert themselves in places they don't belong and throw off this near-perfect difficulty curve and make for a jarring experience when you're playing them. Road to Nowhere has you moving forward and jumping across gaps on a very precarious bridge and pretty much just throws you right into the deep waters with this concept, so you're likely to die a few dozen times on this one. Sunset Vista is just a repeat of a previous level, except it's absurdly long and I hate it so much. And lastly, we have Boulder Debt. How about I just call it Boulder Ass? Boulder Ass is the holy grail of traumatizing levels. It is peak mental anguish. You're running from several large boulders as the camera remains in front of you the whole time. The thing about this boulder is that it is always just a little bit faster than you, so anytime you need to veer slightly left or right to dodge an obstacle, you're really giving up distance between you and that mammoth boulder. Doesn't sound so bad though, right? I've got my analog stick here that allow me to swiftly and precisely make those 45 degree turns without even thinking about it. So what's the issue? <laughs> Playing Crash 1 with analog controls. <laughs> That's very funny. Try doing that with the dinky little D-pad, you simpleton. Because that's what this level was originally made for. A directional pad. With analog sticks, you can confidently veer any degree of any cardinal direction with supreme accuracy. With a D-pad, you don't get that luxury. Instead, you're just pressing one or two of the buttons and just hoping it takes you in the right direction. And considering how accurate we need to be with our directions on Boulder Ass, yeah, case closed. I just want to put this level in a box and never talk about it again. Wait, no, Crash, don't smash that! What is my life? My name is Marky Mark, and I have just covered Crash Bandicoot for PS1. At some point, I will check out the 2017 insane version of the game to see what kind of changes they made, but for now, let's just enjoy some classic gaming, yeah? There's such a unique charisma to these old games that you just don't see anymore with the sleek and flawless presentation of today's games. Crash Bandicoot embodied that charisma, not just in the gameplay, in the graphics, or the art style, but in its impact. We are still talking about Crash to this day, after all, and that's because Crash was a major part of that golden age of gaming from 20 years ago. It just makes me happy, man, seeing these titles get remade, because it shows they all have a flame that will never die out. As hard as it is to say goodbye for now to our good pal Crash, it's time to move on. I also let Crash pick the game I'll be doing for next week's video. So, which one did you go with, buddy? Oh shit. <laughs>